If you've got five minutes to spare and need a refresher on the Game of Thrones saga, here's a quick breakdown of everything that went down in Season 1. But beware, this video is dark and full of spoilers. And some family moments that are not so family friendly. Savage. The series opens in the northern wastes of Westeros in a time when the continent is nearing the end of a long, peaceful summer and facing the prospect of winter once again. A group of Night's Watch soldiers are attacked by undead White Walkers. From the very beginning, the series shows viewers that the true enemy lurks far to the north, even as Westeros' great houses scheme and plot against each other. On the other side of the wall, Eddard Ned Stark tries to keep the peace in Winterfell the old-fashioned way. But soon enough, King Robert Baratheon and his extensive entourage pay Ned and his family a visit. Robert wants Ned to serve as the new king's hand. Ned would just as soon stay home because the job description sounds, well, the king shits and the hand wipes. But once it becomes clear that previous hand, Ned's old friend John Aaron, was murdered, Ned reluctantly decides to pack up and move to King's Landing to protect his old war buddy. Ned brings his two daughters, the ladylike Sansa and the tomboyish Arya, along for the journey. He leaves his eldest son Rob to rule Winterfell alongside Lady Catelyn and his other sons Bran and Rickon. Not that Bran has much of a choice. After climbing around on the castle walls, he spies some big-time Lannister incest. Jaime pushes him out of the tower window, leaving him permanently paralyzed and with just a bit of amnesia. <laughs> Ned is not thrilled with what he finds when he arrives in King's Landing. He uncovers evidence that Jaime was the true father of all three of Cersei's children and that Robert's true heir is actually a bastard blacksmith's apprentice named Gendry. Unfortunately, Ned is not great at politics or dealing with backstabbing advisors like Littlefinger and Varys. But since there weren't any tower windows handy, Cersei arranges the death of her husband and has Ned imprisoned. Her disgusting son Joffrey is crowned king and one of his first acts is to publicly execute Ned. Arya is able to escape King's Landing during the fallout, but Sansa finds herself trapped in the city and facing the prospect of marrying disgusting Joffrey. Back in Winterfell, Stark-Lannister relations were already falling apart when Catelyn blamed Cersei's brother Tyrion for Bran's fall. Tyrion clears his name with a little help from an opportunistic mercenary named Bronn and returns to King's Landing. But once news of Ned's death reaches Winterfell, all hell breaks loose. Winterfell secedes from the Seven Kingdoms and Rob is declared King in the North. After scoring some early victories and capturing Jaime, Rob's legend begins to grow. But Rob isn't the only challenger to the throne, however. Half a world away, the surviving Targaryens are plotting their comeback. The possibly more disgusting than Joffrey Viserys marries off his young sister Daenerys to barbarian warlord Khal Drogo. You will be his queen. But it isn't long before Viserys pushes his luck too far and finds himself wearing an entirely different sort of crown. Assuming he wasn't dead before he hit the ground and could actually find himself doing anything at all. Daenerys finds herself falling in love with her new husband and his people, even as her faithful bodyguard Sir Jorah Mormont makes googly eyes at her. She also narrowly escapes an assassin sent from King's Landing. Sadly, Daenerys winds up losing both Drogo and their unborn child. In return though, she gains three new fire-breathing children and the new moniker Mother of Dragons. It's the first step in her journey towards conquering both Essos and Westeros and reclaiming her birthright. Back in Westeros, Ned's bastard son Jon Snow decides there's no place for him at Winterfell and swears allegiance to the Night's Watch. He's also hoping to track down his uncle Benjen, who was cool to Jon at a party once but is now missing somewhere beyond the wall. Jon doesn't find many friends at Castle Black apart from the sheltered, bookish Samuel Tarly and the elderly Maester Aemon, who just so happens to be another surviving Targaryen. Jon does attract the eye of Lord Commander Jael Mormont, estranged father to Sir Frenzo, er, I mean Sir Jorah who recognizes Jon as one of the few decent and honorable men in the Night's Watch. He even bestows upon Jon the Mormont family sword Longclaw, one of the few Valyrian steel weapons still remaining. And not a moment too soon, as the dead are quickly beginning to wake up in the icy lands beyond the wall. And so, at the end of Season 1, we know that the White Walkers hate fire, Joffrey is disgusting, Rob's a boss, Sean Bean literally cannot survive anything he's in, and damn if we're not excited about these dragons. For more Game of Thrones, check out Cinefix's What's the Difference About Sex in Westeros, as well as our breakdown of three brilliant moments from the Battle of the Bastards. And as always, be sure to subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.